booked up to Facebook. So we're ready. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Canada Virtuous Women platform. It's such a joy to have each and every one of us tonight. We're happy to fellowship with one another, whether you're watching us in the Zoom room or you are connected on Facebook. God will bless you. We pray that the word that will be shared on this platform today will minister to you directly as an individual and that you would run with it and bless your own life. Thank you so much for deciding to join us tonight for the next one hour. And so we have a choice to vessel. One of my favorite persons. I love her so much. And tonight she will be blessing us with the word. I call her Mama B. And she will be taking over the platform for the next one hour to beat us with the word of God. Take it away, Mama B. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Father, Lord, we thank you. Thank you so much, woman of God. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. We want to just bless God for all of you for this time that you have sacrificed to uh, not only be with us, but also, um, you know, listen to God speak to your hearts through the words that he has laid in my heart this uh, evening. We just want to say thank you for coming once again. Woman of God, thank you for the privilege. It's always a privilege to come and serve. And uh, just the fact that you answered this call, it's, uh, uh, it's giving us that push to yeah. come and serve, especially when you call on us, because sometimes we do not just come, you have to push us. <laughs> yeah. <to come. laughs> and so I consider it a real privilege. Thank you so much, Lord. Let's just pray. Let's pray and begin uh, the evening. Father, Lord, we want to bless your holy name. We want to lift you up on high in the name of Jesus. We have come before you, O oh Lord. Father, we have come to source from your throne. We pray that, Father, may you be with us. May you guide us. May you help us as we seek your face. Lord Jesus, we are your branches because you are our vine. We cannot stand on our own. We have come, oh Lord, to tap, to, to just lead from you, oh Lord, and, and, and get the directions on how to, to face our fears, to face our worries on how to just move through this life's challenges and on how to depend on you. Father, be with us, Thank feed you. us with your word and let it bear fruit in our hearts yes. that will bring glory unto your name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. 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 I am so, so happy, uh, my dear sisters, uh, because this evening um, we will be talking about something which is just a reminder to most of us, because to all of us, actually, if you are on this platform, if you are watching us, it means that you have a heart for God. So we are just going to be reminding ourselves of what is most essential in having your heart for God. And so today we'll be talking about seeking God. Ah, seeking amen. God. Amen. And that our um, passage, we are just going to be reading from Matthew 6, verse 33. Um, growing up, this used to be one of my favorite passages. Uh, my One of my sisters uh, that we grew up together is here, Winnie Anaga. We used to recite this as a memory verse that we really loved. And so I believe that we, when we call on each and every one of us to uh, talk about Matthew 6, 33, it's just going to come up like that, you know. But today we should look into this verse of the Bible and ask ourselves, what was Jesus talking about when Jesus said, in Matthew 6, 33, I read, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It's a passage that we all know. When, when, when we start talking, we first sometimes we are just like, yeah, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. We recite it most often. And uh, we do not stop to really think about what Jesus was saying when he said, but 
it proceeds with a but. Mm -hmm. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first. We say these things, but we do not listen to the word first when we recite this particular Bible verse. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. For most of us who are here, we are seeking God in our own ways. Whether we go to church or we assist in an online, uh, an online platform like this one, or we um, fellowship in one way or another, we are seeking God in our own way. We are trying to seek God in our own way. We are not seeking God. We are trying to seek God in our own way. Uh, but we are not seeking him first. And so we can say with some level of certitude that we all seek God. Yes. However, do we seek him the way he really wants us to seek him? Do we seek God first? Let's think about it a little bit. Do we seek God first? Now, when we talk about seeking, it's searching, trying to find something. It means there is a lack. It means there is a problem. It means there is um, a want, a need, an important value that we want to find. That is what happens when we seek something. But the level at which we seek things shows our level of desperation. If we are too desperate for something, we seek that thing in a very different way. We put our mind, we put our, we, we are so concentrated in the way we seek that thing. Most often, we are guided by physical things when we seek. You know, we want to seek that job. We want to really look for a job that we want. We want to really look for a house that we want. We want to look for money. So we, we put our minds to it. We seek it. We are anxious about it. We, we, we are eager about it. We are emotional about it. We toss. We, we have unrest because we are seeking something. But come to think of it, do these emotions also come to play when we seek God? Are we anxious? Are we eager when we come before God? When we are seeking God first, are we eager? Or is it something that, well, we will get there when we get there? Do we play it on our own time? Do we want to be like, okay, you know, God understands. If there is anybody that we always say would understand, and so we relegate to the background, that is God. Which goes totally against this passage. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Recently, I, I've been thinking about my life and the things that I do. And I, I came to realize that on Saturdays, most often we would go to parties. We would visit people. We would plan an event and we would attend those events. Yeah. No matter how tired we have been, no matter our activities throughout the week, we will plan these events and we will attend them. And then on Sunday, we'll get up and say, I'm tired, I cannot go to church today. Oh. We, most of us are in North America where we are so busy with work, with family life. And so we do not really have that life like back home because back home, I know we, you know, you fellowship not only on Sunday, you fellowship on other days of the week. If it is not Bible study, it is a prayer meeting or, you know, you, a choir practice where you still fellowship or something. And so it didn't just used to be one day of going to church. 
mm. fellowship. It didn't used to just be seeking God on Sundays. But we've come to North America and our lives have taken another turn. Most of us are economic migrants, we will see. Mm -hmm. And so we came to seek a better life. This has made us not to really devote time to our daily devotions with God, our time of communing with God, just that time to get closer to our Father, our God, our Redeemer. We, can, we don't have that time. And then on Sunday still, that we have taken upon ourselves that this is going to be our time with God. We are tired after a party. We are tired after visiting others. And so we are not still putting God first. Even on that one day, we are not putting God first. And so it, it got me thinking that when God, when Jesus actually tells us to seek first the kingdom of God, what did he mean? What did he mean? I got to this place where I had to commit. I had to be intentional. Yeah. Because seeking God first does not mean that you just wake up and you're, you're telling yourself that, oh, yes, um, it's been a while. I've not spoken to God. Or today, I need to tell God my troubles, my worries. I need to. No. Seeking God first means establishing a relationship with God. And to establish a relationship with somebody, we take time. Those of us who are married, we know that we didn't just get married to our spouses. We didn't just get up on one day and say, this is the person I want to marry. Yes, when they saw us, they professed their love to us. But we were still in that place where we had to groom our relationship. If we can do this with man, who will say yes today and tomorrow will say no? Who will say, I love you today, and tomorrow will say, I was confused? What more of our faithful God? What more of he who has given it all up for us? Are we seeking God first? So this brought me to a place where I listened uh, at one point to, to uh, uh, the, word, uh, the word of God. Uh, it was this man of God who preached and he was like, you have to be intentional about what you want because principles are things that are done intentionally. And our God is a God of principle. Uh -huh. Our God will do things. I bet you because you are principled about it. Mm -hmm. And so if you are principled about seeking God first, you will tell yourself that in your life and not just in your physical life, but every aspect of your life, you seek God first. One of the ways that I learned to seek God first after knowing Christ was making that commitment be principle that every day I must start my day with Christ. Mm. It doesn't matter if I go to bed at 5.30. At 6 o'clock, I have an appointment with God. I keep it. At first, it was difficult. So I'm not saying that it's going to be easy if it's a commitment that you're just making for the first time. It's not going to be easy. But God needs us to be intentional and put that time and tell him that, Father, on my own, I cannot do it. I need your grace. I need your help.
to be able to do this. And so I decided to be that intentional about my time with God. This does not mean that all oh, throughout the day, um, yeah, God, your time was six o'clock. Now this is my day. I have the rest of my day and uh, I'm just like onto my day and all of that. No. What this means is that I intentionally seek God first. And so even if I'm working at night, my first is my time with my God. Yes. I may work all night, but even the bosses I've worked with, they know that six o'clock I'm taking my lunch because it's my time with God. And I bet you that when you seek God first, it, you, you have to put your first, your time with God, that Father, I'm starting my day with you. I'm seeking you first. And when you do that, there is a lot that God just downloads on you when you come to him and say, Father, this is the start of my day. Take me through this day. There is so much that I have heard from God. There is so much that I, I, I have taken out of the word of God when I seek him first, when I come to him at that time that I have put as my time with God, there is a lot that sometimes I come to realize um, sometime it, somehow in, within my day that, oh, this is what God was talking about this morning. When I was seeking his face, he led me to a passage. He led me to a verse that answered a question that has not been asked yet. He led me to some wisdom that I will use in the course of my day. And so seeking God first is to me a priority. Mm -hmm. I can't even turn as a, near my cupboard to drink water if I have not spoken to God first. Yes. Sometimes when I go through my night, at first it was difficult. Oh, I have worked nights for a while. And I bet you, working nights, it's usually so difficult because it's towards the morning that you want to sleep. But when you tell God, that father, this is your time for me to seek you first. God sees you through in ways that you cannot imagine. Mm. Also, I've realized that when you seek God first, there is just so much more that it comes with. That peace that passes all understanding comes with seeking God first. Yes, you cannot describe, you cannot, you cannot describe the peace of God because he, Christ, is our peace. And so how do you start by describing him? You don't know why you are happy. You don't know why you feel fulfilled. Even with nothing in your account, you are happy you are fulfilled you are satisfied yeah even with that child that is like giving you this kind of worry you like you feel like oh this father i need help with this child but when you place it in god's hands by seeking him he takes that worry and just gives you that peace that you need it will stop being that child, but it will be about, Lord, where are you taking me to? What are you showing me? What do you want me to know? Because in the course of every trial, there is a lesson. And so when we know that 
our lesson is coming from a trial. We will just leave it in his hands when we seek him. We will lay aside our wit because he is there. He is our bearer. He is there to bear it for us. And so, how do we seek God? Apart from seeking him physically when we come to him. I was surprised a couple of months ago when we were in uh, uh, one of our retreats and I just, I realized that our emotions are things that we have to seek God with. Mm -hmm. It took me by surprise. I thought my emotions, you know, we, we say these things, we, we are believers, we, mm -hmm. we are children of God. Yeah. And we read these things every day. Our Bible is there. It tells us when you study the Bible, but we just do not give it all. We don't seek God with everything. We don't seek him first. Because if we seek him first, actually, we will know that there, are, there is a second, there is a third, there is a fourth. And so if he is capable of taking care of the first, he is capable of taking care of every other thing mm. that comes after. And so we seek God physically. We seek God spiritually. But we hold our emotions. Yeah. We do not seek God. We do not come to God with our emotions. And so my years of following Christ I, I discovered that I was battling with so many things. I was battling with being judgmental. Yeah. Because I will tell you this. It's true that we women have been given a seed sense. God has blessed us with seed sense. But women, we overanalyze. And so it makes us judgmental. Uh -huh. That's how I... I am. That's the work that God is doing in me right now. Because I usually tell my friends that the first issue to a problem is identifying the problem. Mm -hmm. When you identify the problem and you come to God in honesty, God sees through you. He knows you. He just cannot force his will on you. So he's waiting for us to come to him. We overthink things. If somebody looks at you and like, mm, if, if somebody just gives you a look, most of us, we would go back and analyze, why is she looking at me? You, you know, you want to get an explanation to all of that. It is actually a burden to us. Because instead of using that time to do something fruitful, you are analyzing and analyzing and analyzing a simple gesture that might not mean anything, actually. We worry about things we are not supposed to worry about. Now, have you seen a husband and wife who have an occasion? The wife is everywhere. What are the people going to eat? Or how is the house going to be decorated? What am I going to do? I, the wife is everywhere, thinking wild. We worry. And the bad thing is that sometimes we worry about some things that are not even there. You are worried about something that is still to happen, like something that you, you are thinking might happen. Your day is, cloud, is so clouded that God cannot even speak to you when you come to him physically. Yes, you're there physically, you're seeking him. But are you there as a whole? No, because of the, the, the crowd, the crowdedness of our minds, we don't give room for the Holy Spirit to come. 
and do what it does best. We do not. What am I going to wear? How, what is my child going to study? Like the, a couple of weeks ago, I was asking myself that, oh, my, my daughter has to go to the university. Which university will she go to? And I, I had to call myself, stop it. She is the one going to the university, not me. <laughs> like, why am I, am I seeking God about her university, getting a good choice, getting a good course, getting what, or am I thinking out of my mind where she will go to, how she will be, be will she be able to stay alone? Like, it has not happened yet. People mm -hmm. are still going to school online. That is, those are some of the things that just crowd us and make us not seek God first. Seek God the way we are supposed to seek God. Prioritize. Seeking God first means prioritizing God and the things of the kingdom. We are distracted by every other thing but what we are supposed to do. Our focus is just wobbling as if like this image, you know, we, we, are, we, we are there, we are physically there, but spiritually we are far. We are far. Have it, has it ever occurred to you sisters that you are praying sometimes and you find yourself in a thought, deep in a thought, you've yeah. forgotten that you were praying. Yeah. And you are deep in a thought that will end up giving you headache. Mm -hmm. And so you've put God on standby. That's right. Yeah, go, wait, wait, wait. Let me finish with this first and then I'll come to you. How patient, how patient is our God? And he's there on standby. We all know how rude it is for our kids to be talking to us and then they, they, they just suddenly maybe go somewhere or any other person go somewhere and then um, they come back to you that as I was saying, it's so rude. We cannot stand it, but we want God to stand it when we do that. Are we seeking God first? Another thing that we should seek God first in is our finance, our tithing. Yes, it's something that we rarely talk about. But I bet you, when you receive that pay, do you first of all say, let me give God his own part before I start picking and, you know, squandering it on my bills and stuff. Do we seek God in our tithing? Or maybe we spend all our money and what is left, okay, now I can, I, I can, yeah, I can give my tithe now with what is left. And I, I can give offering and, or, um, my bills are too much. I cannot, I cannot give my offering. I cannot give my tithe. Dear sisters, it is a matter of faith. Yes, but also it is a matter of principle. You have to believe and trust God that you will put him first even in your finances. Because just like this passage says that all other things shall be added unto you. When you just seek God in your finances first, I bet you the things will be added unto you. Although our seeking God first is not only for physical things, but that's why we are here. That's why we are in North America. 
That's right. Yes, let's face it. We we shouldn't, we, we can't say, oh, okay, uh, I'm, I'm a child of God. I don't look into money matters. Then don't work. Yeah. Don't do a business. Just stay home and see if manna will open your roof and come down. <laughs> yes. We need to test God. And it's in our faith that we seek him with what we have. As we seek him spiritually, physically, so let's seek him with our finances as well. Mm. Let us seek God with what we have. Because remember in the Bible, every time God has wanted to use anybody, he has asked them, what do you have in your hand? And then he uses that uh -huh. to show us how mighty he is. And so when we come to him in our tithing, that one ten, so people go beyond one ten. But when you do that, I bet you, as God said in Malachi 4, you will not lack. He will open up the floodgates, and I bet you, you will not. I remember that uh, there was a time that I didn't work for quite a while. We could hardly pay our rent. My husband and I were struggling at that time. We were really struggling. But right from when I was in Kamau, I, I, I learned the, 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 the principle of tithing and it was just in me. And so at that time, I would do translation for um, an immigration lawyer and he would pay me $25 an hour. He will call me and I'll go there, I translate, he will give me $25 an hour. So most often it used to be like two, uh, two hours or four hours. And so at the end of the day, I'll have a check of like a hundred dollars, which was so much money for me at that time mm. because I was not working and we were really struggling. But from that money, I must give my tithe. And my husband was like, you, 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 can't, you, you can't, you don't have money. You can't give tight. You know, no, no. He, he, he was always on the defensive that no, he's not going to give his tight because he barely can, you know, make it. But then one day he told me that I'm looking at your account and you've never gone to overdraft. <laughs> and that was when I also realized that I've never, I've never gone to overdraft. Never. With the 50 and a hundred dollars that I had. And so I told my husband, I said, you know what? Try God with not meeting this. We can't meet our ends, but just try God. And so we had just our rent money uh, 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 one month. And I begged him. I actually begged him. I said, I don't know. God has just laid it in my heart that you should just, just, just tied, please, can you? And he said, after a long struggle, he said, okay, I will, I will. So he actually took off his tithe. And so the money was short for our rents. And that was on a Saturday that he, he did that. On Sunday evening, my uncle from nowhere, sent us money wow he was supposed to come to canada he said oh i decided at the last minute that i'm not coming to canada so please take this 300 dollars and uh, you know just consider that i i am there and mm -hmm. do something for yourselves and i bet you sisters what we needed to fill that money was 300 dollars wow 300 dollars so Monday, our rent was ready. Hmm. But then on that Monday, let me go. What I, find? I got a check. The person in my house, he, he, he just goes to the house from nowhere. I say you have to wait. Oh, so and, 
And that oh, check actually oh, is from the CRA. <laughs> like Shais, can you mute, please? I'm trying to mute her and she's unmuting. Oh, God. Shais, can you mute, please? Thank you. Go ahead, Mama B. Thank you. And that check, as I was saying, came from CRA. It is so difficult sometimes to get a check from CRA. We all know that. And this check was, what, why, why did I get it? They said that they sent me money saying they were supposed to be paying some money for my kids and they were not giving that money. They had not been giving me that money for one year. One whole year. So this God, wow. that, that particular incident changed my husband's life for good. That wow. was when he started tithing and realizing that he must seek God even in his finances. Seek God mm -hmm. first. Take okay. out that, just give it to God. Mm -hmm. And I bet you, God is always there. He knows us more than we know ourselves. He sees us in ways that we cannot even imagine. So my dear sisters, if you're still struggling to make God your priority or your number one on the list, you have to come to God in prayer. Yes, you have to come to God in prayer and honestly tell him that, Father, this is my weakness. He will carry you on eagle's wings. Most often we are not honest about our weaknesses. So we come to God and we think he is man. We are like, Father, I have been serving you. I've been doing, we, we count the things that we do. Mm. He knows what we do, not from our actions, from our intentions. And so when we are coming to God with our struggles and lying about the struggles, are we actually seeking God? Yes. We come to him. But then we hold back. That which he really has to take from us and give us what is light. We hold it. God is not going to force us to give it to him. He will not. He is waiting for us to actually be honest with that issue and say, no. I don't want this anymore. My life is not supposed to be like this. I need a shift. I need a total transformation in my life. And so we should devote more time to studying the word of God. We should devote more time to studying the word of God. You, you know, I, I was watching a, a movie <laughs> uh this movie is the acting of um the not the the book conversations with god mm -hmm. and the the author was like at the time he took the decision to 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 start writing that book he actually heard a voice and he thought he was going out of his mind why did he hear a voice? It's because he wrote on a piece of paper that why is life so hard for me? Why are things not working? And so in his sleep, he heard the voice. Do you really want the answers to this question or are you just venting? Hi. That is the same thing with us. Most often we come to God to vent. Mm. 
we just vent. It, we are sick. We are coming to him. Yes, we are seeking him, but we are venting. We are not giving him the chance to work in us, to work through us. We just come and pour our frustration and just go on and on and on and on and on. And when we are done, we like, okay, amen, we leave. Is that seeking God? Uh -uh. Seeking God is talking to him and listening. It's a two-way thing. Uh -huh. We talk, he listens. He talks, we listen. And so, most often, we will talk, he will listen. And how will he talk to us? It could be that voice, but most often it is the word. Yes, it is the word. Most of, if you leave this word, you miss the mark. You miss everything. We spend time to read novels, to watch movies. But we miss knowledge because we throw away the word. That is how God speaks to us. And there are lots of wisdom, directions. There are lots of benefits here. This word that we so disregard has the solution of everything that we need. But we seek the solution everywhere else. Not there. Yeah. yeah. The word of God brings light. The Bible says at the entrance of this word, ah, right. Let us not miss this light. Let us seek him. Let us lay aside all these other weights that are just distracting us and seek him. Because in this life, in this journey, there will be pain. There will be worry. There will be many other things like wars. There will be violence. But the word of God will give us that light that we need. It will feed us and equip us to be ready for every of these other things when they come. Uh, right. The word of God is there for us to search, for us to let just, just sometimes just, just read it. I beg you, sisters, let's just read it. When I was growing up, reading my Bible was like a huge punishment. But the more I read, sometimes not just like I'm, I just read it. Let, let me just read. I discover things that are just so useful. Even in my day-to-day -day life, leave God aside though. Just put God first aside. But in your day-to-day -day life, when you come to think about it, that the flowers in the garden are there today, and tomorrow they are not there. You know, it's, it's winter. Well, it's getting to spring. I can still call it winter, spring. But in most places, flowers are blooming. And so when you read the Bible and you read the story where God 
beautifies those lilies which are there today and tomorrow they are not there. It tells you how worthless this life without Christ is. Mm. It's sorrowfully worthless. Like my heart is so burdened when you see every other thing that people hold on to but Christ. Yeah. Look back at all the inspirational speakers who have told us that the key to success is happiness, health, and wealth. Just look at their lives. They have had it all. Steve Jobs refused God onto his dying bed. What a waste of life. That all of what he knew and all of what he invented, it was on your dying bed when you could not move that you realize that you could seek God. Oh, we have to rethink our lives. We have to seek God. In word and in truth, we have to seek him. We have to tell him that, Lord, I might not be seeking you in the way that you want me to seek you. Show me. Show me. Teach me your ways. That's what the Bible says, that we can call on him to teach us his ways. And God will sure do. God will sure do when we call on him. One of the inspirational speakers that I listen a lot to is uh, Bob Proctor. He died just in February uh, of this 2022. Yeah. And he, he mo most, most people would tell you to listen to Bob Proctor. He has a lot to say about life, about success, about how to... To, to push, position your mind. But hey, no matter how you position your mind with Bob Proctor's, all his teachings, that mind without Christ is nothing. It's empty. It is empty. You are still in want. You are still in lack. And so you have to seek God. You have to seek God because the wealth, the everything, you amass them, you get them. The final destination of your soul is what really matters. After it all, where are you going to? Yes. Whether a gospel speaker or an inspirational speaker, all of these people will come to a conclusion that there is life after this life. Mm -hmm. And so, what is that life after this life for you? I remember one of the songs that growing up we used to sing. My sisters could really remember that. Uh, uh, Ma and we. Um, after I have preached Christ to the world and I fail to do his will, oh, woe is mine. I have suffered a great loss. Like that song up to date. I used to sing that song when I was in class seven, in primary seven, back, back then. But that song resounds in my mind every day when I ask myself that in all of the seeking, if I'm not seeking God, where am I heading to? Yes, in all of this seeking without God, where is my destination? Ah, it gives me some sort of 
fright to know that after all of this one hour that we come and spend here, after all the times that we, 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 we spend in our worship, in our times with God, in our fellowships, we can miss the mark because we did not put God first. Huh. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. As for his righteousness, God is our righteousness. On our own, we cannot get righteousness. So when you seek God, he will take you to that place of righteousness. Your life will not be the same. The things you used to do, even those who were so close to you, they will start telling you that, ah, hmm, Ma Adeline has changed you. Before, she used to behave like this. Before, when you do this, she will react like this. Today, hey, she's not that same person. It will not only minister to you as a person, it will minister to the people around you. Yes, it will touch many lives. And what is life at the end of it all? If you have not touched the life of some other person, that is a way of seeking God. Because what you have tasted, you don't want to keep it for yourself. Mm -hmm. You want some other person to taste too right. of God's goodness. That is how we make a difference. So my dear sisters, are we actually seeking God? Do we resolve to change our priorities in the way we seek God? It is something we have to sit back and really think and purpose in our hearts. Yes. Daniel purposed in his heart. Most often when you want to do something and you do not purpose in your heart and make it a principle, hmm, before you know it, you're overtaken. You're like, oh, I can no longer do it. We have to purpose in our hearts. And then God will come in and help us fulfill that which we have purposed. My dear sisters, it is well. It is well. Sometimes you will ask yourself that with all the seeking in your own way, why are things going the way they are still going? Don't give up. Sister Mercy told us on, when, on, on Tuesday that we should not give up. We should yeah. keep on holding on. He is God. He is faithful. He will come to us. He will come to our aid. We see just one picture. He sees the bigger picture and the frame. Yeah. And so we shouldn't give up. Yes. We should hold on to God in whatever we do and say like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that even if our God will not save us, we will still not worship your God. Because when he says it, he does it. He will show up. I would like to conclude with this story that I heard of a lady who, 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 who came to a man of God who was preaching and talking about the goodness of God and how when you seek God, he comes to your aid. This woman walked up to this uh, man of God and said, your God is not what you are telling us. Because I could not have a child. I tried for years, I could not have a child. And so I decided to adopt a boy. This boy, we brought him up as our own, loved him. This lady and the husband, they loved this boy. And at the age of 14, they decided that they were going to tell the boy that, they are not his, uh, his real parents. 
But this instead destabilized the boy. The boy became so worried at 14. That is the age where kids are, you know, they, they, they ask questions, they, they worry about things. Uh -huh. And so it, it just, this, this, this came to this child in a very bad way and the child could not just take it. And so this, this, this couple had to put this child down, pray with him, beg him and tell him that whatever it takes, they are going to look for his birth mother. He should just bear with them. They will look for his birth mother when he turns 21. Whatever it takes them, they will do that. And then when this boy was 20, he started riding his bike. He learned how to ride a bike. And a few days after his 21st birthday, this boy was hit by a drunk driver and he died. Oh, and so this woman asked this preacher, what can you tell me I, I, about this God? What else can you tell me about this God who looked at this boy, looked at me who did not have a child and had the one opportunity of somebody call me mother and took him away. And then God ministered unto this man of God. And he said, the boy who died at the age of 21 is because you had promised and God listened. The boy's mother had died and the only way that your promise could come true was that he dies to be with the Lord and eventually to be with his mother. There is no relation after death. Know that. But this lady said, whatever it takes, God, help us to find this boy's mother. Hmm. Mm. We don't see the picture. God does. We see just a little bit. And so we may think that our trials are there to overwhelm us. No. When we see we keep on keeping on. It's because we trust that our God would not let us down. Whatever it takes in life or in death, he will not let us down. Provided we seek him, he will not let us down. So my dear sisters, let us seek God. Let us seek God in truth, knowing that this God who says it and does it will never leave us. He will never forsake us. Let us look up to him. Even in the darkest of nights, we have been there. Most of us have been in dark places. And then out of nowhere, God shows up when we look up to him. He will never fail. He will never leave us. Like he says in his words, he will never leave us. No, forsake us. Fear not. Fear not, my sisters. Fear not as we seek this God. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, 